and videos on some of the different looks that can be achieved in DaVinci Resolve. In these videos, we will see various looks starting from the simulation of old fields, then moving on to the blue-green swap technique, to the different techniques to make a day for night, both indoors and outdoors, then bleach bypass, cross-processing, and finally, we will see how to manipulate the images in Duotone and Tritone. Let us start in this first lesson with a series of vintage looks. We will use this shot that lends itself enough. It has some pronounced highlights and a decent depth of range. We are going to make four types of color grading. We are going to simulate the faded color of an old film, like a 50s color film. We are going to simulate the decay of the pigments of a slightly later low quality film. We are going to simulate an old black and white film treatment and finally we are going to simulate a low quality film from the 70s with its typical color palette and we are also going to see how to insert the film grain. Let us create the timeline containing the clip that we will work on and move to the color page. First, you must consider the peculiarities of the film. The film has a dynamic response that is fixed, cannot fall into super blacks or super whites. So it is an image that tends to be quite compressed, and especially the old films due to decay never have deeply full blacks. Having said that, we are going to simulate a process of decay, of deterioration of the film, so we will inevitably look for an image that has partially lost saturation. So the very first step to take is to lower saturation. To simulate such a long deterioration, we will descend heavily about 40-50%, which means bringing the saturation value from 50 to 28-30. After lowering the saturation value, we work on the curves, specifically on the luminance curve, raising the mid heights to lift the highlights and to keep the shadows quite stable with another point in the lower part of the curve. Remodulated the luminance curve, we begin to make treatments that refer to the old films. The very first of these treatments is a beautiful vignette. So we add a serial node and make a classic vignette. We expand the vignette both in white and height, extend the fall off a little to make it a little softer, reverse the power window so that it works on the outside of the selection. And back to the wheels, we proceed to a sensitive reduction of the gain in this part of the image. And a little more delicate one on the gamma. Next step, old camera, old film, old optics as well. Many old optics had focus conservation issues, so they had a precise focus point in the middle of the lens, but due to the lens distortion and not always excellent lens block, composition quality, they could present marginal forms of distortion. So, in another serial node, we create another power window, this time circular and central. We extend it a little bit, and we blur it a lot. It must be very, very delicate. You can also tighten it a little bit more. It must be a very delicate mask. We reverse this mask as well, so it will operate on the outside of the image. Go to blur controls and insert a blur effect. How strong, how much the blur is present, it is an individual choice. Finally, 
the last processing step. We have already generated the bulk of our color decay, but the decay tends to also correspond to an increase in the lightness of the film. In the last processing step, we will add another serial node and we will create a slight turn in the heat of the gain. More importantly, we will bring the luminance curve back inside the safe zone. Therefore, between 0 and 1023 of the values indicated in the waveform of Da Vinci. So, let's take down the gain so that the white point is not in the super whites, but for any RGB value, it falls right within our safe area because film can go above the super whites. And it's, since it's a film that has lost chromatism, that has decayed, we also raise the blacks. They have to be not in the super blacks, so they can't go below zero, but in our case, we are going to raise them a few more points so that we can lightly brush out our shot. And here is the force of the vintage looks, faded colors. A film that has had a chromatic decay over time, we transform an image of this type to an image of this type. We proceed at this point with the second chromatic experiment, which is the simulation of the decay of the pigment. Specifically, the pigment that tends to decay first, which then gets lost the most within the scene, is green. Obviously, the starting setup is very similar. Here too, we are going to do a saturation reduction, a little less sensitive, around 20-30%, so it retains more color. And again, in the curves, we are going to do an intervention that preser preserves the value of black on the luminance and slightly overloads the highlights. The game gets interesting in the next phase. We add another serial node where we will work on the curves, but we will let the luminance curve be and work separately on red, green and blue, because obviously each of the three channels will have to be managed differently with the decay of the pigment. Basically, we will keep the red and blue channels in the shadows and stagger them on the highlights while we are going to create a linear decay of the green channel. So we fix a point for red at the bottom of the curve and we go to pump the red significantly into the top of the curve. Similar operation on the blue. So let us fix a stable point to keep the blue correct on the shadows and we will load the blue a little less than red at the top of the curve. Finally, we are going to make a linear decay of the green. So we are going to completely lower the green levels of our image, thus creating a linear decay that preserves the green component in the blacks, so you see correctly in the shadows, but slowly it decays more and more in contrast with the increase that we see instead in the curve of red and in the curve of blue. Consequently, we add another serial node where we bring our shot back to safe values once again, always because the film does not support either super whites or super blacks. So let us go lower the gain to bring the red values back to the safe area as well, therefore below 100% of the lumen. Although we are already in the safe area, we play a little even with the blacks, making them a more washed and less crushed. Here is a compressed signal that reminds of a film that has undergone a specific chromatic decay. At this point, we are going to make a black and white transformation. Obviously, being black and white, the process needs, from start, a complete desaturation of the scene. So we pull down the saturation to zero and create a fully desaturated image. 
In the next step, we add a serial node and once again we create a vignette. Vignetting helps a lot to convey a sense of old film, although it is not necessary in the simulation of a film. Quality films and cameras obviously did not have this type of distortion in the past. But we make the vignette once again reversed and as previously we go to intervene on the gain and slightly on the gamma, thus creating a closure effect. The next intervention in another serial node is to bring the film into safe parameters. So let us go down with the overall gamma level to eliminate super whites and as usual we check it to be in the black safety parameters as well. In this case, we are going to keep the black values at the minimum so that we have fairly full blacks. The last touch that distinguishes a good black and white from a simple desaturation can be to return to the beginning and slightly adjust the curve of the gamma to manage the intensity and density of the midtones. Going to recover a little bit of the midtones, always without going to affect the blacks but above all to add at the end another serial node where to make a very slight adjustment of luminance on the gain. This is something that should not be in a black and white film shot but a certain perception of light, light given by projection, phototransposition etc etc allows us to convey a more truthful feeling to our image. We can move either slightly towards the cold or slightly towards the warm. So we could go on and warm up our image slightly or cool it slightly. Obviously it must be an extremely delicate intervention. I must not have a perception of color but only of freshness or warmth. This is the version slightly turned in the cold, while instead this is the version slightly turned warm. For the fourth and final look, we go to intervene quickly on the duration of our clip, so that we have a more margin when playing through it. Uh, we slow it down to 50%, and we make a low quality 70s film style. Being a newer film, even if the basic settings are the same, we desaturate less, about 10%, to dampen a bit the color tones, but without creating that strong decay from older films. And inside the curves, operating on the luminance curve, we will do a very slight rebalance of the curve, very delicate. Next, we add a serial node and operate chromatic variations depending on the different luminance levels. A peculiarity of many films of the time was to have a strong presence of magenta on the shadows, yellow on the midtones and cyan on the highlights. So we will take advantage of the ability to separately manage the YRGB channels, lift, gamma and gain to build this type of color mapping. We slightly increase the 
color equally of red and blue to obtain magenta on the left. The two values must be the same. Of red and green on the gamma, once again the values must be the same. And of green and blue to obtain the cyan on the highlights, always with the same value. At this point, we can desire to add some little distortion or do a small rebalance. But anyway, we still need to do a saving step. So let us lower the gain so that it is out of a super white realm, realm and pull up the lift so that it is out of a super black realm. And above all, we add some grain to the shot. To add the grain, we create another serial node and use a matte. A matte that I have already linked to this footage, choosing among various film clutters, including this film grain, specifically a 45mm grain, which I imported into the project. Select it, right click and add as matte for color page clip, meaning to the clip we are working on in the color page. I have already done this process, uh, we already see it in the Add Matte menu down here. We just choose which of these three mattes to use and let us select the 45mm grain. The software creates an external matte node that we must bind to the node tree. So we add a layer mixer that we insert into the tree tie the external matte to the layer mixer and choose a blending mode suitable for inserting a grain file. Specifically, we use overlay and the result, when we play it, is a slight thin grain on the image applied evenly and consistently. And here is all the color evolution from fading colors to distressing dyes, black and white and 70s.